Welcome to another fun-filled episode of Black Opinions Matter, motherfucker. My name is Amino Hassan. I'm joined, as always, by Big Jerv and Black Trey. Fun show for you guys today. We're going to review the last few episodes of Michael Che's That Damn Che Show, the best show you probably never heard of. Uh, we're also, <laughs> P-Valley is back, coming out on Sundays, Saturday nights, if you got the app, so... Review, our review of episode two. And man, this shit is garbage. Uh, <laughs> we also uh, got to talk about something that happened that was funny at Britney Spears' wedding. Before we get to that, though, www.patreon.com slash count the dings. That's the website where you sign up to be a Patreon. You get all the exclusive content that's available to our patreons like the bomb overflow episodes like the watch alongs for the nba finals for the movies that we've done uh like the discord like all the other good stuff make sure you are subscribed to the patreon account make sure you're not missing out on any of this stuff if you are already subscribed boom thank you very much and go peer pressure somebody to do the same all right so Britney Spears got married. I I don't know who she got married to, but I do know that someone that she used to be married to showed up at the wedding, crashed the wedding. I don't know why. The, the, my man had to get tackled by security. And I, I thought to myself, in the movies, this shit happens all the time. But I don't think I've ever witnessed anything like that happen in real life, anything crazy at a wedding. I wanted to open it up and say, Jerv, Trey, have you ever witnessed something crazy happen at a wedding? I mean, <laughs> I've seen people I can tell are, that are jealous and shit like that, like try to like sabotage or what I would perceive as being jealous and try to sabotage weddings. Um, how? Sabotage how? Uh, I mean, I've seen everything from bride, bridesmaids be just B I T C H C H E S S. I had to spell it. That's right. why are you so, spell it. Is, is your kid in the room? Just get no, no, I, I don't know. It's 2022, bro. I don't know if we're supposed to say that anymore. But yeah, I've seen that, and I've seen best men, best men. Um, oh yeah, bro. I mean, I could tell the story now. Like it's all good. Bullshit and caring. If he does, I mean, I don't. I don't give a fuck. He shouldn't have did the shit. My uh, one of my good homies, um, that I've known since fifth grade, got married, and his twin brother was literally always like, you know how when there's twins, yeah, there's they're competing, yeah, not even that they're competing, but there's one that's better athletically, and then oh. there's one that probably gets more girls, and you know, all yeah. that type shit. So. The one that was the more athletic one, you know, had went to college on the scholar, you know, on a football scholarship, you know, all D1, all that shit. You know, in high school, I would say got the pop more popular girls, got the better looking girls right. all throughout life. And then when it was time for that wedding time, uh Lil Bro, Lil Bro did all right for himself. Um okay. in fact, Lil, Lil, yeah, Lil Bro did all right. I was I was proud of him. So uh, you know, I've seen I saw the best man wait until like a couple hours before the wedding to go get the haircut. The best man is the twin brother, right? The the best man is the twin brother, and the best man right. is the you know the one that was the you know the more popular one in high school and all you know athletic and all that. I saw him wait. You know, if the wedding was at two in the afternoon, he might have went to the barber shop at like eleven to go get his cut. Or like ten or some shit like that, knowing that we had to be there at like eleven for the pictures, and the best man is the one that least needs to be there for the pictures because there's some ceremonial best man type pictures apparently that that right. that, that are taken right. Ball just ball like to the point where he you know he had to get a suit, all that shit, and I'll tell you that uh, we got to the point where we were contemplating whether the show was just going to have to go on because wow. Um, uh, I, if if the if the limos was there to pick up everyone, you know, that was in the wedding at one p.m. for the for like a for mm -hmm. like a one thirty start, 
Mm-hmm. We probably gave ball to like 115, and he might have pulled up at like 116 type situation. Oh, wow. And then wow. had the audacity to, to get on the the the, uh, the the shuttle or the limo or whatever and be like, "What's up, y'all? Everybody good?" It's just like, "Yo, come on, talk." Yeah, you know I mean, and then and then, this so is he was shit. jealous. He was jealous that like it wasn't his day. Like his. I mean, he'll like, never admit that head. shit, but I've known him since fifth grade. Like I can fucking tell, right? Like, yeah, yeah. like yo, like you know what I'm saying? Like I I've watched your whole lives, and I I, I know that this is the one time where he's. Got the limelight over you, and yeah. this is how you're acting. Ah, I got, you know, what I'm saying I got, I got to, I got to call a spade a spade, bro. And you know, I mean, you're a little jealous. That's funny, Trey. You got anything, anything crazy you ever seen at a wedding? No, nah, I haven't been any. I mean, everybody's been kind of cool at weddings. You know, I mean, I've probably been to too many. I'm, I'm probably over it after this. But um, yeah, what that, is, like, this is the last wedding you. Hold on, this is the last I, wedding you're gonna go to, as it? <laughs> yeah, because like, I mean, you know, I'm at that age where all my friends are obviously trying to not, but like, it's still a point of like, bro, like, it gets to a, you know, you, you traveling across the world <laughs> and like, trying to be there, and you know, it's, I've probably been to like, twenty five in the past three years. Oh man. Yeah. Twenty five. Yeah, love is in the 25? air, bro. Been going crazy. Hold, hold up, hold up, bro. Yo, you you be joking on me for all the weddings I be at, but you over here fucking Hall of Fame that's, numbers. Oh, that's eight weddings a year, and two of them years been in about, the pandemic. Yeah, it's been crazy. Um, but man, love is love. Everybody's finding their partners, and I guess I'm not get the weird age group too, around like thirty three to forty, where everybody's just kind of like tapping out, just hanging their jersey up. Oh, That's a lot. I'm getting a headache thinking. Of, I don't think I've been in 25 weddings in my life. I think I've been in like five. Maybe yeah, six. man. It's crazy because like I'd be like, why invite me? Some of them have been catching me like off guard. Like I'm like, we not no, because you know, like think about it. you be like, you invite me to your wedding? Like we're not like, that cool, right? Yeah, you know, no, because you think about like when you go to invite some because you know wedding lists are small, bro. Yeah, like, everybody don't get bro. that. Everybody don't get to go. Like you know what I mean? So when you like start beating out family members or first cousins i'm like damn i start to feel important but then you know you start thinking about like travel and where you gotta go or it creeps up and it's like damn i do gotta go to this wedding and then sometimes they're just like back to back to back to back if it's like in the summer trey you know why everybody invites you bro you you bring you bring the uh you bring the elegant you bring the um the eloquence what, what's the eloquent what's eloquence, the hell's the word yeah. Elegance, what the hell? Elegance, elegance, thank you, thank you. You know, I'm saying you bring the class, you bring the class, Trey. Like, come on, bro. Yeah, let me just say right now, I'm not, I don't even know if we need to boss it over this or not. But Trey had on his on his uh stories the other day, uh, somebody like a picture of this dude. I guess he works with or not. And this dude was dressed. And I, I sent Trey a message. That this is the anti germ Like this dude was the opposite of germ in every way. Wait, is Trey? Is that the is that the same post that I commented on? <laughs> uh, I think so. It was funny. Yeah. Yes, it was. It was the one. But yeah, like my my boy, he's like super creative, man. Like one of the most talented graphic designers ever. But he just got a unique style. From Delaware, actually, it's so funny. Um, oh shit! Yeah, let me, that's yeah, that's so, a little that's a little Uzi Vert era right there, bro. No no shots, yeah, no yeah. shade. That's that's just not my timeline right there. Yeah, no, he's like really one of the nicest people ever, bro. Like I I really rock with bro. Um, so like yeah, no, nah, to talk about this wedding, my boy, he man, it was it was beautiful. Um, obviously it's hot. Like you gotta think that all the way through. It's 102 degrees. I didn't have a sear sucker. Uh, which would have came in handy um, for the heat. You're familiar with that, Jerv, right? Bruh, I'm actually shocked that you didn't. Like, you you strike me as the individual that checks the weather and, and comes per- perfectly prepared. I would have had a well, seersucker suit on. Well, the thing is, I had to get resized. You know, I gained a bunch of weight in the pandemic, so I can't just be like, <laughs> throw, you know what I mean, throw it on the old yeah. one I had. So, like, it's been a minute, so I just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a vet in the game. I told you, I mean, I've been to like so many weddings to a point where now I'm going to men's warehouse. I get fitted, and then I send it. I basically pick up at the location of the city that I'm having the wedding at. 
and just do it that way. So I don't have to travel with the suit. Nice. That's a good so, deal. That's a, that's a good technique. Oh, yeah. No, it works, man. It's less stress. You know, you, and you just drop it off. But to fast forward about this wedding, beautiful wedding, um, my first Jewish wedding, too. So that was oh, that never was, been that a was Jewish wedding. Never been How to did, one. Did they it like was, step on the glass and everything? They stepped on it. They stepped on the glass. They did the, uh, you know, chair like dance. The, we did that. My arms are sore as hell for like picking up, you know, the chair and stuff that with the homies. We circled them and danced and stuff like that. But cool thing was Eve was the bridesmaid. The rapper. Say what now? Eve, the rapper, was pit, the bridesmaid. Pit, pit bull in a skirt? Yes. Oh my God. Woo. So it was so random. Um, <laughs> got a chance to meet her and her husband. Um, but towards the toast at the end. She performs. No way. She performed. What does she, she do? Love is blind. She. <laughs> no, that's a terrible that. song. That's it a is, terrible man. song. It but is. no, um, well, no, it's a great song, but a terrible no. song to perform. But it's a terrible did, wedding song. She did who? <laughs> she did. Let me blow your mind. She did. Um, who's that girl? Yeah, and I wanted. You know, I was being funny. I seen her this morning because they actually had like a brunch, like the following, and I wanted to start rapping um, one of the songs from um, Volume One, <laughs> Ride or Die. <laughs> like, man, you didn't perform that, but it was like, I don't know how cool or annoyed <laughs> she would probably be, yeah. so I just kind of left it alone. But yeah, overall, maybe, maybe, man, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it, overall, it was a beautiful wedding. It was a beautiful wedding and stuff like That's that. Stuff. Um, yeah, but it's getting to that point where. Cats is just getting old, man. My my friend group is really just hanging it up. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's only two guys left. It's me and Nick Nick DePaula left, man. From my group uh, that's not married. Uh, Trey is Eve as a bridesmaid the most surprising member of a bridal party you've ever you've ever seen in your 25 weddings in the last <laughs> <laughs> your prolific um, wedding career. <laughs> oh, man, that's a good question. Wow, you have yeah, to think I mean, about that. Wow. I had it. I mean, dude. Who were the other candidates? Um, shit. Because I've that's only happened once where I went and I was like, oh shit. Uh, it was I went to uh, Chris Bianco, the the restaurant tour here in Phoenix. He owns Pizzeria Bianco. Um, mm -hmm. he got married. I went to his wedding, and I sh I was late to the ceremony, so it was at a this uh, big cathedral downtown Phoenix. So I'm, I sneak in the back and I sit down and you know like they already started the, the ceremony and I'm sitting there and I'm like you know trying to get my bearings and I look up at the at the wedding party and I'm like is that Jimmy Kimmel? <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> Kimmel was one of the groomsmen and I was like oh shit and apparently him and Chris go way back or whatever. But that's the only time I've ever been surprised like that like I was like is that Eve? <laughs> that shit would surprise me too. Jerv have you ever seen a surprise in the groom in the bridal party or the groom's party, whatever. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not in the in those circles like you, gentlemen. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I just, no, it's just, it's be, just I regular I people. <laughs> I thought Oshino and Sparks might have been like groomsmen at a wedding. That just that would be <laughs> sick. That would be sick. By the way. <laughs> that actually would be. Um, that actually would be kind of crazy. But yeah, I mean, I think Eve is probably like takes the I mean, cake, you can't, bro. You can't. You can't be Eve because it's like because she's not even visible anymore, right? Like. It's been I mean, so long apparently she had it. a show. Apparently she has a show with Cameron and I guess Brandy and other people, but I don't remember it and I really wasn't like a show? Watch she's on a daytime show. She 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 was on them daytime, like the real type Jones, I thought. No, she's like, one, also I, she's but yeah. also she's in the UK too, dog. So like again, you're not gonna see her. She's not really visible like that. So like to just even just pull up, I was just kinda Oh wow! Yeah, bro. Like I'm surprised she, she still goes by Eve. She was a co-host on the CBS daytime talk show, The Talk. In 2021, she started in the American TV series Queens. Yeah, Queens is her show. Yeah, and she got. She, oh, that's not Eve the rapper anymore. She she's she's the star. Yeah, we haven't we haven't I haven't the, peeped it, but I heard it was good. I mean, I thought she just kind of disappeared. Yeah, I mean, she she disappeared I mean, she off of I mean, off of our radar. radar. 
<laughs> oh yeah, she, she did. No, she does not have to work. No, she does not have to work. Bull's a billionaire, right? Yeah, yeah. Isn't the guy shouts, who created hey, Reddit? You know what? Shout to him too. Not nah, Gumball three thousand. He was cool, man. I met bro last night. Is, what the fuck is Gumball three thousand? Google it. You'll see. What the Google fuck? it. Just tell me. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he owns like all the cars and stuff. I know, like you know, like the Dupont and stuff. Gumball three thousand. All right, well, shit. Uh, probably, I guess I'll, some shit. I guess so. I guess I have to look it up or whatever. Um, I mean, because so, I don't technically have the correct answer for you. That's the reason why you don't. No, nigga, that. you don't know what that shit is. No, either. I just know it's cars, bro. But like, I don't want to be it's wrong. Cars? About cars. Yeah, like he. Oh, like, I didn't think yeah, that at like, all. It's like a, it's like a, like a race league type thing. I think it's like a premier race league. Oh, word. It's a yeah. It's a celebrity motor rally which takes place on public roads. How does that shit? How do you How's get rich off of that shit? I have no idea, but that's the only reason <laughs> why I know, bro. Niggas, niggas been getting arrested for racing on the street for years. My man's over here becoming a billionaire off of it. That's wild. Complexion for the protection. <laughs> Shut up, boy. Yeah. Well, shit. Well, thank you for checking in with us, Trey. I know you you out there sweating your ass off in Texas, but uh, we appreciate you joining us and giving us the scoop. All right, there go Trey right there. So, Jerv, it's up to me and you to talk two things. Michael Che or P-Valley? Which one do you want to start with? Uh, my, let's give Michael Che the credit he deserves, and let's end with that because we can end with this shit show that Stars is putting out now. I mean, we oh can start with God. the shit show that Stars is putting out. Let's start with the shit show, bro. All right, so P Valley, if you like, just joining us before right before it was like maybe 2019. It was a show on Stars. It followed the events at this small strip club, a strip club in a small town in Mississippi. And how like there was kind of like a mystery as far as one of these strippers what, what her background was, and there was uh you know there's a company trying to come in and buy up all the land because they want to build a casino, uh but the people who own the strip club didn't want to sell and so there's all types of kind of like trying to press them whatever it was a decent story right like it was entertaining, right Jerv am, am I correct in season one of of P Valley? Uh, so, so I. I'll say watching these episodes has making me think, was it really good? Or like, was I just in the pandemic and I was just seeing titties and ass on the screen and I was like, oh, this is, this is my lane. It was, I, look, it was better. It was better than what we're getting now. Like what we're getting now, I'm just like, I, I, I'm legit blown away like how terrible this is. I th I'm glad you said it, bro, because I thought it was just I thought it was just me. Because when when I talked to Trey about it last week, well, you know, Trey gave the, the nice, respectful review, and I'm yeah. saying I'm like, I'm like, damn, I maybe I'm not watching this right. Like I thought this sucked. I remember you guys were talking last week about how, like, compare and contrast this with Flatbush Misdemeanors. When Flatbush Misdemeanors came out, and their thing was like, we're not going to acknowledge the pandemic. Because how do you acknowledge a pandemic and just make it, oh, it instantly your show becomes the pandemic show and you're just talking about the pandemic the whole time. So they made the decision not to have masks. Let's pretend it didn't happen. Right. And I thought it made for a great show. With P Valley season two, we see the opposite of someone trying to write a story that's around the, and literally Every third word is pandemic, and people complain about masks and stuff. And I'm just like, I don't want to watch this. It's too right. late. Yeah, first of all, it's too late. Yeah, we we already back outside, and it's not. <laughs> but it's not. It's not late enough where we have nostalgia about the pandemic. Right? It's it's like we just got outside, man. I, I ain't trying to hear all the shit all over again. All these arguments all over again. But the other thing, and I'm pretty sure this didn't happen in season one. And I realize this is a very, I'm, there might be three people in the world who are annoyed like me about this. I watch all my shows with the, with the closed caption on. I just, like, I hate rewinding to hear, what did he say or whatever? I watch all the shows with the closed caption on. 
I've never seen more ghetto ass closed caption than for this show. <laughs> they, there's a scene where where he, uh, Uncle Clifford's holding the baby. This is in episode one. Where Uncle Clifford's holding the baby, and you know, the baby, the baby's mother is like, "Oh, you guys, he's so quiet. How'd you get him to be so quiet?" And the dude says he probably put a beer in his bottle. Now I heard what he said, and I thought, "Oh yeah, he said like a beer in the bottle to make the kid go to sleep." But the closed caption said B U R E. So what the fuck is a burr? And then Uncle Clifford said, no, I would never put burr in there. You know, I'll put straight whiskey. And I'm like, did them niggas just misspell beer? <laughs> and they're doing this for the whole goddamn show. And it's so annoying. Because I don't I don't need I don't need you to do that, man. I don't need you to translate fucking ebonics for me. I got it. I know what they're saying. Oh, you're, you're so your beast more with the closed caption people, yeah, and not with not not with how they're saying it. No, with no, no, not with how they're saying. It. Like I think they pronounce things the way they pronounce it. Now I do have a problem with these niggas. This whole thing is scripted, like it was written for Twitter. All the Twitter catchphrases. It's the that that for me. It's the that and that. Like uh, keep that same energy. Like all of the Twitter stupid ass shit. Like it's written for Twitter. Both in the dialogue and some of the shit, it's like they're having a tryout for strippers. I'm all for inclusivity, you know. <laughs> you want to have the the party for for Uncle Clifford's birthday party? Of course, Uncle Clifford is is I believe supposed to be trans or 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 just very gender fluid. Of course, at his surprise birthday party, we're gonna have a bunch of people there. That's fine. It makes sense within the story. But you gonna have a tryout for strippers? And there's a bunch of dudes in the tryout for a strip club, for a regular strip club in the South, in small town Mississippi. And Uncle Clifford just told this homie that, he, that that they can't be on, they can't work at yeah. the paint. You can't work because here. they ain't going for that shit. And then you got yeah. niggas, niggas trying out, including a big fat white dude. Big fat bald head white, and I was just like, "What are we doing here? Like, are we just like, are we literally just doing the look at us? We're good people. Look at us. We're, well, look how diverse our cast is. Is that what we're doing? I feel like they've already proven they're diverse, though, right? Like, Uncle Clifford is the main, is one of the main characters, and and, and Little Murder. Yeah, a little murder. Yeah, absolutely. And let me just get to Uncle Clifford, man. Uncle Clifford last year I thought was like a three dimensional person. Yes, he's the the the, uh, the effem, effem, effeminity, effeminacy is at a high with him. But like, this is a character who had like his shit together and like when I had to deal with like these real life money issues and da da da. And now I just feel like it's a catchphrase, dude. Come home. Pass out on the couch. Oh, this da da da. Like I'm like this. It feels like a caricature, man. Like all of it feels a lot, lot less complex, a lot thinner of a of plot and character development, and just let's do this shit, let's do that shit, and and then as if to that wasn't enough, Jerv, we introduce the supernatural. We got ghosts. We got oh. a Ouija. We got a Ouija board. Uh, what do you call it? Oh, the, and I'm just like, I, 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 no, 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 no. Stop it. Stop Dude. it. Oh, my man, a Diamond doing snapping his fingers and it's like, oh, it feels like you had seven pounds on you. That's a much weight to pull a trigger. It's like, oh my god, it's guilt. It's weighing. I'm like, what are y'all talking about, man? What the fuck was that scene about? I could. Uh, so before I say. It's not in Louisiana, correct? Like the pink's not it is. in Louisiana. Oh, Mississippi. Mississippi. Mm, Am okay, I a letter, so, a letter? Yeah. So that would make sense. I mean, I guess I can buy the whole voodoo shit because you're in that area. My by the way, I'm not disrespecting. I don't want no problem. Don't nobody make no dial of your boy. I'm chilling. Don't want no smoke. But I can understand that part. But how are you going to have this whole supernatural thing, right? And then the only glimpse, like, I had to rewind this the, because in the corner of my screen, there's a, a, a ghost just appears, right? 
with the with the with the theatrical music, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And then I'm like, oh, all right, bet. Like the ghost is about to, you know, scare her or something. Nah, it's just my man's coming back for more torture. He not you're not gonna close, bro. Like I get it. I'm respecting that you're not gonna close, but you just coming back for more torture. And then what the ghost? So what the ghost is gonna be chilling there until next week? <laughs> when the pink, when the pink open back up, I'm just I'm like I just I don't I don't think I need ghosts in my fucking show in this show, this show that was about like money and about real estate and about like murder and shit like that. I don't need no ghosts, man. Also, I don't need no full on music video intro for a nigga that we don't know. Yo, nigga, I thought that shit was weird. I was like, yo, who is this guy? I'm trying to remember who he was in season one. And I realized he's nobody. He's a new character. Well, I need the whole Rick Ross uh, intro for him. I was, I guess, I guess, so it's late. So I guess from a technical standpoint, then that's lazy to us, right? Instead of instead of figuring out a way to introduce this character and, sh- and show us that, yo, he most likely probably was the man before Lil Murder left, right? right? Right. So now, you know, they gotta play I'm whatever. Uh I think I'm big Meech, uh, like all that. Yeah. Instead of instead of writing that, instead of doing right. what you should do as a writer, as a producer, as a director, whatever the case may be, they're like, ah, nah, fuck it. We know what niggas want to hear. Play that Rick Ross, they'll know what that means. <laughs> well, I that's the other thing I was wondering about. I was like, how much of their budget did they blow on music? Between that song and fucking Beyonce 7 Eleven. Everybody else, no wonder they just got a bunch of strippers and not actual actors. Not nah, old girls in there, ain't that old girl Ooh. from um from Snowfall? Isn't that her Ooh. with the red hair? Um, Leon's oh. chick, that's her. I no, think that's her. I, I mean, at first glance, I didn't Google it, but I'm almost positive that's her. Um, um, Snowfall, Leon. yeah, because I'm looking at her, I'm like, oh, she's got to be important. And because Wanda. that's whole, yeah, that's Wanda from Snowfall, I think. If not, she got a sister or a cousin. Played by Gail Bean. Hold on. Wanda Bell, Gail Bean, Gail Bean. Gail Bean Wikipedia? IMDb, why not? New strippers. Okay. Yeah, she's in P-Valley. You're right, bro. She's rude. All right, so... Yeah, so... I feel like they could have gave her a little more lines than you know. Yeah, what I, mean? for real. <laughs> I was actually ready to give her credit for being a pretty good actress for for a stripper. Yeah, she she's no wonder she's a fucking she's she's an actor. And then the demon chick. What demon chick? The the one the voodoo one. The one. Oh that, the, uh, yeah. yeah, whisper whisper. Who's she? Like, she, have you seen her in something else? Nah, not that I can think of. Her name is Psalms Salazar. Psalms like like the Bible. This should be fun. Like spelled like the Bible? Yep, like Psalms. Psalms 316 or whatever. Psalms Salazar. Oh, she's Hispanic. I thought she was white. She on Instagram. Oh, when I typed Psalms, Hold on. Psalm Salazar. Oh shit! Sub a drug 10, trafficker 000. comes up. Hey, sub ten thousand on 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 Instagram. Time for the blue check mark to go to. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> but point being, I, man, like I'm just like, who are these people, man? Like, what are we doing here? Hey, you, yo, I think you hit the, head, the nail on the head, bro. They, they, is I was in my mind, I was like, oh, how can I get a, a a hype Williams joke off because it was so dark, right? Like I feel like they blew the budget, but you yeah. uncovered it. They blew the budget. They like because I, I think they had they had some songs in episode one too, right? So, and if they didn't, they, I know Beyonce song ain't cheap. Dog. Maybe they Beyonce? know somebody they can they can plug them with the Rick Ross song. They can a little discount, but the Beyonce song, no. Bro, I'm like, all right, I see where this is going. They clearly didn't spend any money on writing. 
uh, uh, overall, man, like this might be at this stage right now, this might be the least favorite show that we've done for this. Uh, sure I'd rather watch Lo- I'd rather watch Lovecraft Country. Here's why. Because Lovecraft Country, whatever, whatever was wrong with it, at least it knew what it was and it tried to be what it was. This show all over the map, bro. You don't even know who you are. I mean, I hear you, but it's like, do I want to watch a bad show with, you know, excuse my ignorance, I apologize, no offense, but do I want to watch a bad show with no TNA or do I want to watch a bad show with TNA? Or a bad show with TNA and DNA. (laughs) It ain't for, uh, all I'm saying is not for me. But we'll continue to watch it because it comes out on Saturday night, so that allows us to, to review it. <laughs> Shit, man. All right, let's 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 wrap this thing up with some Michael Che talk, man. All right, so you watched the last three episodes, and you are like, you couldn't wait until I watched because you wanted to bring up a certain sketch with me. And as I'm watching, all of them are funny. All of them are funny, but I'm wondering which one was Jerv. Which one did he want to bring up? The, uh, the, African, uh, the African parent one. See that's you know the funny thing is someone posted it on Twitter, just that sketch, that sketch, okay. and so, so I watched that already. Oh, I'd already seen it, yeah. But it, it's it's funny. It's like Taken only. That's it. I, the, the I, I I just know that I know that that has to be. I mean, obviously it's a little different. You 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 being a man, but like you have to know some friends. Or somebody who 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 disappointed their family by by mar- by dealing with someone, you know what I mean? Like I I I, I know people that that have that, that have dealt with people that I know their parents were like extremely disappointed in. Wow. Oh, yeah. No. I mean, I could see it definitely happening. Uh, I just thought it was just funny, man. This thing said, "I know every African man on the East Coast," and he just mobilized the whole the whole movement and shit. Yeah, um, but my, my, my nigga kept the phone on. <laughs> my nigga kept the phone on as he said, Yo, I'm about to join you in the shower. Okay, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh I, I'd be hurt, bro. I'd have to pull up. I <laughs> care, dog. I'd whip that little nigga's ass. Because <laughs> at first he's mad respectful. That's the funny thing. He's like, Oh, I hate that we had to meet this way. And like, Oh, I'm, I'm your daughter's boyfriend. My name's William. <laughs> and like, as far as, uh, as, as long as my man goes on and like goes through his whole, that next shit, he's like, Oh, all right, well, then look here, bro. And he can hear the <laughs> old boy switch up. She be calling me daddy now. <laughs> you got, you got 24 hours. Oh, <laughs> uh, that shit was too funny, man. So, uh, that was a sketch. I, I thought, you know what, I thought you were <laughs> the genie sketch, bro. Oh my god, yo. So, did you see someone, t- someone, someone said something and asked, um, I can't. I, that's just a wild sketch. I don't want to know what to say. He said, yeah, yo, genie, kill all of these motherfuckers. Like, your wish is my command. But you know what you got to do, right? <laughs> yo, yo, they said, yo, you know how he got all that shit. He probably sucked that genie's dick, and then the genie just came out. Yo, he's a he's a genie. Yo, he, I, you are correct. You said it after the first round of reviews. Yeah. I really do think that, and you know, I'm caught up in the moment because a lot of these sketch shows are way back in the day. Yeah. Outside of Chappelle, man, he, like he, yo, if he can oh. produce another, if he can produce another season like that, I think he's easily got the second best sketch show, like easily. Yeah, I think I think the one thing is like it's six episodes at a time, so it's like niggas not killing themselves, you know, or at least they're not killing themselves to put out content. Like I think. Chappelle show was like how many episodes of Chappelle show was in a season? Probably like ten or twelve. No, it was more than that, bro. It was more than ten. Here we go. Really? Two thousand and four. Um, twelve episodes in season one. Thirteen okay. episodes in season two. Okay. Right. So it's like they, you know they put in work. That's four seasons for my for the Michael Chase show right there. Yeah, that's four seasons worth. Right. I don't, you know, in that. So, you know, and then if you go to Key and Peel, which, you know, I think we were both kind of like 50 50 on, like some, they had their moments, but. No, oh, I, no, no, no. They did not have their moments for me, bro. Oh, you don't, I, no, I, I actually no, they cannot had, stand. 
No, I can't. I can't. I don't like a lot of that shit, but they had some funny ones, bro. The Obama skit was funny. No, how about the, the one with the gay wedding? Where it's like, I think I've seen that. That one's one of the, that probably one's probably their best one, where it's like, because they had a lot of celebrities in doing cameos, and they had my man, Lieutenant Daniels, was in there. They had Romney Marco was in it. Like, it, it was so the premise is they've got a family member who's gay, who's getting married. And so one of them, has a gay coworker, they called him in and said, Hey man, like we're invited to cousin so and so's wedding. Like, we've never been to a gay wedding. So they ask him a bunch of questions like, yo, <laughs> is it <laughs> like now which one of them is the man? Like like just mad questions. It's mad funny, bro. Like I'm telling because all the questions are ridiculous. It's like uh oh wait, hold on, let's see. Yo, I always thought they was they, I always, I always thought they were like the tap dancing dudes. I can, I could not. Ooh, I can, I can't stand them too. Like I, I think what you call is cool now. Whatever the one that does us and all them. Yeah. The other boy is corny to me though. The tall dude, whatever. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't, he, I don't he, know which one is which, but yeah. Uh, I think that's K. <laughs> is that his name? Key. <laughs> I think that's key because Peel is the yeah. I only know Peel because he's the director of you now. <laughs> so so he goes like this cousin Delroy is getting married to a man, which is crazy. And everybody in the room nods. <laughs> says, uh none of us are gay, so I would assume we would all sit in the straight section, right? He's like, There's no straight section, there's no gay section. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> and he thinks a little taking notes. Like, when in the ceremony do we sing over the rainbow? I'm nervous because I can only do jazz hands for like three minutes before my. <laughs> now, can we see the pony show from the straight section, or are we way in the back somewhere? Where do you get the euros to buy gifts? <laughs> when do we sing YMCA? <laughs> well, that's so, funny, actually. when do we sing the gay hymns? Like there, there are no gay. Hymns. <laughs> There's no gay hymns in the ceremony. There are no gay hymns. <laughs> Do we throw something other than rice? What would you throw? I don't know. Couscous? Skittles? <laughs> Dog, look it up. Gay wedding advice. It's it's I got you. it's legit like one of their best ones, man. That one and the one where uh my man is sitting there and his girl is like uh asking, you know the one where he's sweating? Oh, I so I only know that one because of the because it's because it's the meme. The meme, but like you've never seen the sketch? Nah. Like, like, yo, I, I, don't, I don't think they're funny at all. Like, I, no, but, not. No, I, I mean, they're not, but like I said, they have their moments. I'm I'm, I'm going to give props what props should do. Like, they had their moments. Like, that one is like a girl, dude with this girl, it's like, uh, yeah, it's like, uh, she's about to, okay, can I use your laptop? And he starts sweating. It's like, like what? Damn, what's wrong? It's like, no, nothing. It's like, what, it's not, what are you watching porn on there? And then he starts sweating harder. Uh, and she's like, oh, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you know, everyone watches porn. I watch porn. It's not like it's like that crazy porn, right? And then he's just said hard. <laughs> and she's like, oh, you know, like sometimes you want to push boundaries and like kind of explore his sexuality. There's nothing wrong with that. It's like, as long as like not anything with like animals or anything. And the like, like, every time she's like trying to make him feel better, she says something. I think, that I, I, think I have hard. seen it. I it's think just I funny, man. That, like, yeah. I won't lie. They've got like, to me, I've always felt like the sketches they had that are funny aren't necessarily around being black. They're just funny for being funny. Right, like advice about how to go to a gay wedding. Um, uh, with the dude, like with the one where they're trying to figure out how they came up with the script for Grim Gremlins 2 because Gremlins 2 has a crazy ass script, bro. Like, it's insane. And so, like, like they just imagine like the writer's room is like, What if we had this? Like, no, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, let's do this. All right, that's in the movie, and it's all shit that's actually in the movie. The shit that's trash that I think that you and I see eye to eye on, on this being trash. It's shit where like, um, where it's like, yo, niggas talk like this, nigga. Yeah, son. That, that. like, anytime they try to do black shit, yeah, I always find it to be that some tap dancing shit. I'm with you. That's a tap dancing shit. But when they do shit that's not that, it's just let me just be funny for the sake of fun. The niggas actually not bad, man. The was that a Fox show? What was that a Fox show? No, no, that was Comedy Central. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. So you know, like I said, I'll give them, I'll give them props for props is due, but like a lot of their shit was was kind of corny. Nah, I'm, I like like, you, like 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 listen to this. Listen listen to this description for an episode. 
Two black men on their cell phones adopt more urban mannerisms when they see each other. Two friends relate anecdotes to one another about how they are each the dominant partner in their relationship. See, I tell her, I said, bitch, I don't. That's, that, that's good. But only mm-hmm. when their wives are not around. A contestant on the reality cooking show, Gideon's Kitchen, can't figure out if Chef Gideon. See, that's a funny one. You ever see the cooking show one? No. Hold on. Like, it's, I'm going to play it for you because it's quick. But okay. It's, it's supposed to be like Hell's Kitchen. And the whole okay. thing is like the, uh, the uh, you know, like you, you can't tell whether the Gordon Ramsay likes it or doesn't like it. There we go. Forward. A chef, this is a chicken quiche with cremini mushrooms, baby spinach, and feta cheese. They taste it. Unbelievable. Audra, I have a huge problem with this dish. It's that you haven't made it for me sooner. Thank you, Chef. Because if you had Drew, then I would know how good you are at cooking food that's bad. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chef. When I'll say bad, I'll mean Michael Jackson bad. Thank you, Chef. You know how he looked really, really bad at the end of his life. <laughs> chef, I'm sorry. I don't know if you like the dish or not. You don't know if I like the dish or not? Well, let's put it this way. Pack your knives, get out, you're off the show. Sorry, Sean. Because you should be working in the finest restaurant in the world. Thank you, Sean. Just not any world that I live in. <laughs> in conclusion. Keep. So, so, so you're saying like, it's like, that shit had nothing to do with being black. And to me, that shit's funny. Like the whole idea is like the nigga can't figure out like whether he likes the shit or he don't like this shit. Said so, you, because you're cook, you're really good at cooking bad food, food bad. By bad I mean like Michael Jackson bad. You know like how he looked really bad at the end of his life. <laughs> like this, this up and down shit. They're good at that shit, man. But like a lot of this other shit. Here's another one. A street rapper loses a battle rap to President Obama. A yo mama champion meets with a doctor about his mother's health. Right. Uh, two men yell cat calls at oncoming women, right? Two slaves on an auction block become agitated as they are continued to pass over from being bought. No, two I'm bank robbers, not. yeah, like like two hyped up frat brothers brand their fraternity's letters into each other's body, right? A riot breaks out in residents of a black neighborhood buy into a TV news contract. Whatever. Like, it's all like, it's all dumb shit like that, man, that, that I thought wasn't funny. But like, their actual shit, like the shit that's not anything to do with being black, not bad, man. I fucks with it. I ain't no hater. Congratulations to them two gentlemen. But if you ever want me to get the hell out your house, throw that show on, and I'll, I will gladly leave because I'm, I'm not watching I'm, like, any of that shit. I'm with you, Jerv. Here's the thing. I'm with you. I didn't like that show, but I'm telling you, I can send you some sketches that you're gonna be like, that shit was funny. That shit was funny. Like I, I'll send you three of them that I, I could tell. Like okay, that shit was funny. Like you no know, matter, and I hate their shit, but that shit was funny. But yeah, Michael Che, man, like that, that the the finding your root shit that he did. He finds out that everybody <laughs> see see the 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 metrics say that there's usually one bitch nigga for every five <laughs> niggas in the family. But in your family, it's more like twelve bitch niggas for every five <laughs> niggas. Like, I don't know what kind of metrics those are. <laughs> Yo, he found out every everybody in his family is pretty much like, like it was just like detrimental to like the black community. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it is great, 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 great grandmother who led the slaves from Canada down to Mississippi. Wait, why would slaves want to go back to Mississippi? They didn't. <laughs> she threatened them with a rifle. <laughs> That's wild. Oh, man, good times, man. Anyways. Check out the Michael Che show, that damn Michael Che on HBO Max if you have it. It's real funny. Uh, that's going to do it for us here next week. Like I said, we'll continue with this P-Valley abomination. 
uh, as well as taking any whatever request you guys have, shit that happens during the week. Shoot us a text or a tweet. Let us know. Say, hey, you guys need to talk about this on Bomb. We really appreciate that. For Black Trey, for Big Jerv, it's your boy Amino Hassan telling you to stay black, motherfucker.